My name's Dr. Gulam Bahadur, consultant clinical andrologist. Today I'm going to talk about the practical steps in improving intrauterine insemination, the pregnancy rates, uh, and it's a theme that we have been developing before, but I want to take it one step further. Now, the first thing in any of this uh, improvement is that you really need to factor in the risks. And the risks are one of multiple births and one of OHSS. You absolutely, in any program, you need to have a cancellation, a strict cancellation policy. Because without that, I think you will run into the risks of uh, causing potential harm to either the mother or the offspring. Now, the key things that we, over the years, we have been, we have improved our success rates from literally about six to seven percent per cycle, going on to around 20 percent per cycle. And I know that others, since I have spoken, are even getting even better success rates at around 25 percent per cycle. And I'll talk to you a little bit about that in a moment. So what does 25, 20% per cycle pregnancy rate uh, entail? But I just want to clarify the issue of uh, consistency of what we mean by success rates. Because everyone claims to have a success rate a lot higher than everyone else, and that is what you will find when you go to conferences. But let's just take away, undress all the issues, and what you have is we're talking about success rate per cycle and then success rates per women. And when I, uh, for the past few years, at 20% per cycle, it also translates to a, per, a success rate of about a third of the women achieving a pregnancy. Apparently the miscarriage rates are very small in this. Uh, it's around uh, something of the order of 5%, which is quite nice to know. And the other factor is that the multiple births and cancellation policy that we've had are, again, very, very small. So where do we stand? What is it that we've been doing? The first thing is that we have been going for two follicles uh, using HMG. We actually shifted from Clomid cycles onto HMG cycle, and that was the first time that we began to have a rise in pregnancy uh, out, uh, increases. Um, and uh, using alternate day 150 units, uh, we, we have been aiming for two follicles. Once you aim for two follicles, you 3.4 fold increase your chance of a pregnancy. And that is a very important point to remember. Now, other colleagues of mine have been dealing with some of the more complex cases so over the 35-year-old women uh, using combination therapy of 150 HMG plus uh, a baby dose uh, 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 was, uh, uh, small doses of um, uh, Clomid and they have actually achieved 27% per cycle and, and translating that into number of women that's roughly about 38% uh, of, of their cohort. This is amazingly fantastic because if you put them side to side with some of the mid-performing IVF clinics in, uh, from the HFEA database they actually are not too far off. In fact, some of them are even better. So those are some of the crucial points that I will I, I, I can tell you about today. So the other area that we have really improved upon is uh, the male factor. And, you know, I have been talking to you on this website about the consecutive ejaculate. Believe you me, it makes a big difference. Remember, the women who are having intercourse or having a relationship with a man with very poor sperm quality, uh, their problem is the man. But if you were to ask him to provide a second sample immediately after the first, you will be astonished how good that sample is. And I would urge you just to look at that second sample again. It is a sample he will produce within uh, 15 to 20 minutes or within certainly within half an hour of the first don't discard either of those samples, utilize both of them, and you will really see the benefits. In fact, these are some of the easiest women 
to uh, to get pregnant because all you need is a boost of numbers of sperms to achieve that additional pregnancy. So what else can I tell you about? Uh, I mean, I could give you a whole long list, and I'll certainly give you a slide here uh, soon that shows all the other factors you could be considering. So those are really the key areas. I mean, we can talk about uh, the timing of insemination, which I think is equally important. And um, people talk about 24-hour and 36-hour insemination. Most of our pregnancies have been 29. But why not attempt to do a double insemination? Uh, absolutely, you have been of the wrong opinion, a lot of people, is that it does not work but the, we have analyzed and will be publishing fairly soon because a paper has been accepted we reviewed all the data and in fact double insemination at 24 hours and 36 hours does work there was actually one attempt at a simultaneous uh, insemination I meaning at the point of trigger they inseminated but in fact the results were uh, were not not as uh, impressive at all the, the whole idea was you can capture the sperm uh, or the egg and the sperm at the right time and that simultaneous uh, insemination was based on the fact that the sperm had a long survival rate and I'll talk to you about survival of sperm uh, in my next talk but this is a very important area so the timing as a question is how long can sperm stay in the uterus and when uh, and if we could answer that, we could actually answer a lot of uh, uh, issues uh, uh, about uh, unex unexplained infertility. Thank you for listening, and we'll come back to you again.